Hello, good morning and welcome to another episode of Astrophotography 101. In today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, calibration frames. Uh, what is calibration frames? Uh, why we need to take calibration frames? And finally, how to take each one of them. Um, starting by, what is calibration frames? It's basically a few photos that you take um, uh, with your camera in order for you to correct some defaults or some issues uh, with the images that you are taking for your nebulae or your galaxies. So what kind of issues that we have? Uh, first we have something it's called lead noise, uh, something like uh, amp glow for example, uh, something for the thermal noise that the sensor can produce, and uh, finally the imperfections that you have in your frames uh, because of uh, dust specks on your optics which is going to be here either you cleaned it or not uh, some scratches light scratches of course something like that so we will start by bias frames um, a bias frame is basically a frame that you take uh, to calibrate for the read noise of your sensor and um, to be able to take uh, bias frames the easiest frames you take by your camera you just install everything like it is put your dust cap on and take the fastest frames you can take with your camera so if your camera uh, can take a 0.01 uh, second uh, exposure frame then take that if it's even less take that the fastest that you can take the best it can work why because you don't need to introduce thermal noise to the sensor you only need to get the noise from the sensor that it can do only when it's reading the, the data. So it's a very fast uh, frame and it will be subtracted from your main images in order for it to remove that kind of noise from the image. It's like telling the, the, the software that you're using for stacking that these are the read noise of the sensor. So please remove those from the picture and make the picture a little bit clearer. Uh, the second type of uh, frames is going to be dark frames and dark frames is kind of time consuming um, because you're going to have to take dark frames um, in a way that uh, it imitates your images uh, so if you are having uh, an image of a galaxy or a nebula that you took the exposure time that your sub exposure time is 120 seconds for each sub exposure uh, at a gain of 100 and the temperature of minus 10 then you need to take your dark frame with the same way uh, except for the fact that also you will keep your dust cap on and take it in a dark room um, so that way the sensor uh, of the camera or the frame shows the thermal noise that can produced by the long exposure since the temperature of the sensor will change and it, the, the, the amount of noise in that uh, frame will change based on the amount of time so you will take it with the same amount of time for the sub exposure and the same gain uh, and also uh, you will take it um, with the same length uh, why we are taking uh, dark frames and dark frames is basically to accommodate uh, or to to tell the, uh, the camera this is the amount of thermal noise that the sensor can produce in this amount of time uh, and also in some cameras like uh, uh, the 183 or the 294 they produce something that's called ampli glow and you need to cancel that from your image so in order for you to cancel that, you need to provide a dark frame that the stacking software can um, detect and therefore can delete from your images. Uh, so now you know how to take dark frames and why you need to, to do them. Uh, next one is going to be the flat frame. And the flat frame is basically a frame that's the opposite of all of those. Um, it's, um, it's a frame that you take by... Uh, removing the dust cap but inserting uh, an LED light at the top of your uh, telescope uh, in order for you to tell the sensor or to tell the image that uh, within this image there is every imperfection 
So if there is a, um, a dust, uh, dust speck on your uh, either camera or your filter or your optical lenses, uh, this will appears to be a little bit darker. So when you are taking the flat frame, uh, this will tell the image that those are the dark areas. Please subtract them or accommodate uh, or counter these effects in the final image. And um, flat frames has to be taken with the same temperature as the dark frame and as the light frame and also taking the same gain and also taking in a fast pace. However, how fast it is, it depends on the brightness of your uh, LED panel. So here we are inside the ASI Air. Uh, first thing to do is to show the histogram and as you can see down the gain is set to 100 and the temperature is at minus 10 degrees almost. First thing you set your exposure time to one second and then take a photo. As you can see the minimum of the histogram is zero and the maximum of histogram is 65,535 this is the maximum for this camera so I need to get that to the third of it so between 22,000 to all the way to 25 or 26,000 so I reduce the amount of time to 0.2 seconds still the same thing so I'll go 0.02 second and now my histogram is showing 47,000 so I need that a little bit less so now I'm in the sweet spot 25,000 and the average is 24,000 and if you can see in this picture you have here a dusk spec on the left upper corner and also there is another one in the middle if you can see so there is a few things that this frame will be able to correct and then you go to your auto run set here your flat frame and take a repetition of 30 and then use the exposure that we already set before which is 0.01 and then you can click confirm uh, just make sure that all your bias frames, your flat frames, your um, dark frames are within uh, the same gain and the same temperature and it's very easy to set the same temperature since if you have an astrophotography camera, dedicated one, then you can set the temperature to a minus 10 degree or a minus 20 degree and therefore you will be able to capture at the same exact temperature. Now we will talk about some tips to do that in a very quick way. Um, flat frames first, flat frames has to be taken uh, without removing any parts of your telescope because uh, or your complete bright strain, right? Why? Because it's calibrating for dusts and uh, or scratches and these scratches has to be in the exact same position. So if you rotated the camera, if you removed everything and then you fix everything together to take a flat uh, frame, but your camera is already rotated, then it will produce the um, scratch or the dust, uh, dust um, uh, spec in a different location. So it has to be taken in the same location. So the best to do, do that is to take it exactly after you finish your photographing session. However, for dark frames, uh, dark frames for astrophotography cameras can take them in any time uh, since they consume a lot of time uh, if you're having a frame that is 600 seconds that you have to take frames of 600 seconds right so that will consume time so you can create your own library uh, a library which is basically at gain of 100 I have uh, a 60 second dark frame and a 120 second dark frame and 180 and so on so you can keep them and use them later bias frames they are the easiest to take they are very fast so uh, it's the slow the, the fastest uh, frame possible so either taking them at the same night or next night it makes no difference and they are very fast now the last thing I want to talk about is how many frames you can take from each one. Um, for uh, bias frames, they are very fast. So.
Take 60 or 70 or even 100 will not make any problem for you. You can take them very fast and um, the more the better. Uh, although at a certain extent, uh, it's a diminishing return. So I would recommend 70 or 80 frames and you will be done with it. For dark frames and flat frames, uh, take 30 frames from each one. And uh, trust me, by taking those frames, um, this number is very sufficient. 20 is actually sufficient enough, but 30 to be safe, more than this will be a waste of time. There is one more um, calibration frame that only uh, applicable for the 294 camera, which is a flat dark <coughs> or dark flat, whatever you want to call it. Um, this kind of frame um, is introduced only because the 294 cannot do a short exposure. So if you do try to do a bias frame with the 294, it will not allow you to do so, uh, and it will not accept uh, a, a frame that its exposure time less than a second or even two seconds. So that will make the bias frame impossible to take with the 294. So a replacement of that will be a dark flat. And the dark flat frame is basically a frame that you take with the same gain, uh, the same temperature, when the dust tab is closed, but you take it with the exact same amount of exposure time that you take your flat frame. And since the 294 does not accept a lower exposure time, then set your exposure time to three seconds and take your dark frame, uh, dark flat frame. Uh, and when you are taking the, um, the flat frame for the 294, uh, you need an adjustable uh, LED light since uh, you will have to take a minimum of three seconds uh, sub exposure for this kind of uh, frame, which is your flat frame. So you need the lowest possible LED uh, illumination that produce a little, a less lux uh, or a lumen count rather than a very bright LED light. So um, an LED light, adjustable light, adjust it to the lowest and then do the same as we discussed in the flat frame in terms of the range, the third of the range, and you will be good to go there. Uh, so to sum up now, uh, for any camera that doesn't have, uh, it's not the 294, take bias frames, flat frames, and dark frames. For the 294, take dark fla frames, flat frames, and dark flats. And based on the information you got now, you will be able to stack all of these along with your light frames, which is basically your images, in a software that we will be discuss next um, in order for you to stack all of these images and ask the software to remove all of these defaults or all of these problems from your images based on the calibration frames. Uh, and then you'll get a better cleaned image reduced in the amount of noise that it's produced in these images. And also without the defections in your um, optical train, uh, including all the specs dust and this. I hope by now you understand all of this concept and in our next episode is going to be discussing how to stack all of these images together. Thank you for watching and as always I will see you in the next episode.